Hi there, Graham from Penguin Motors here. In this video, I'm going to run you through a quick distributor test when I fitted a Best Tech distributor to this here 1700 cross flow. Now, the whole purpose of the exercise was that we've got this cross flow here, which is pretty standard. Um, 1300 plus 90 pistons, so 10.3 compression, 1700 cc, BCF2. It had a completely standard head. And when I ran this test, a 32, 36 carb. And the distributor that was originally in it was a completely standard fold unit, Mocraft unit. I just pulled out the shelves, cleaned off, freed off the valves mechanism, slapped it in. In fact, it still had points in it. And the whole point of the exercise was just to see that, well, could the engine use an operated distributor? Because what we were going to do later on is we were going to change the cylinder head and I was also going to fit a pair of 40 DCOEs, as you see here. So if you're average show blogs, maybe you don't have the money to do everything all in one go. So if you kind of, you know, you're doing it on a monthly basis, maybe you buy a distributor this month, maybe you have carbs next, maybe you buy a head afterwards. Um, is it worth starting with a distributor? Bear in mind that um, these carbs don't fit very well with a standard distributor, especially not a motorcraft one, which is what I had. So, and I figured that even if you don't do the carb upgrade yet, you maybe want to do the head or you just run away and run around with it. One thing you want to do these days, you're going to want to chuck the points away for electronic ignition. Well, do you want to fit your electronic ignition and then have to buy another distributor? So the object the exercise was just see, can we put this best tech unit in it? Will it give any power increase? Admittedly, the advance curve won't be right. So because the advance curve isn't spec for such a standard engine, but we don't know. If we don't try, we don't know. Certainly the standard distributor didn't have a correct advance curve. So, you know, it might be a case of put the uprated distributor in, makes a good building block for some further modifications. So, without more ado, let's um, go and make some noise. So there we go, there's our baseline done. We pulled out 105.8 brake horsepower at 5800 RPM and 105.9 pound foot at 4200 RPM. Now I'm gonna stress at this point that, you know, that distributor, albeit it might be an old second hand unit and was on points, I did take it to bits and ensure the advance mechanism worked properly. And I'd also um, gone some trouble to dial in on the dyno. So, you know, it, I, I gave the, I gave the standard distributor the best possible chance. And also in this test, all these tests are multi-run averages because dynos, even well, rolling roads in particular, they all vary slightly from run to run. So to make sure it's consistent, all of the runs are multiple runs, all averaged. So, and that's important because when you're dealing with very small differences, you've got to be sure the difference is there and the difference is real. So after we run the standard distributor up, I put the best tick unit in and I ran it at three different advanced settings. Now, when I talk about advanced settings, you know, I don't go 10 or 12 degrees at idle because what's idle? Well, idle is, yeah, idle's idle, but you know, um, any distributor, you've got backlash in the system. 
you've got the digital bit of drive, cam gear, whatever. There is always a certain amount of backlash and timing scatter, which is why if you've ever used a timing light, you put a timing light on it, that you can see the point of doing this. Because you're looking at, as well as any possible inaccuracy in the foreign point of the electrical side of the distributor, you've got mechanical movement. So that's why always, when I set timing, I will set it, use it around three and a half thousand RPM. And I'm missing it, I do have the luxury here because it's not just a case of trying to hold it at three and a half thousand RPM, because on the dyno I can do it easily. I can load some throttle in, I can dial, set RPM on here, and the dyno will hold it. So even as you swing the distributor, if the power goes up or down, the dyno will hold that same RPM. And it's a water break, so it's a very con continuous, steady load. So I can dial the timing in pretty accurately. Which, to quote John, John Best, uh, manufacturer of the, the, the um, uprated distributors, is probably why I don't see the huge gain that a lot of people do, because I've given the standard distributor the best possible chance, and I've set the timing in the most accurate way I can, which is higher engine speed. So, let's get to the chase here. Let's get some graphs up showing the different timing settings and what we got on the best tech unit. So there we have it. We've now got our baseline in black and in red overlaid is the best tech unit timed in at 27 degrees. So it's actually two to three degrees more retarded than the fold unit was. And we've picked up a fraction power through most of the rev range. There's a bit of a hole at the bottom, but then I've got to stress, you know, two, two and a half thousand RPM. If you full throttle down there, then you should be driving a diesel, not a BCF2 equipped cross low. But that's not really the point of it. The, the point of the exercise was, if we were upgrading in stages, could we usefully fit the upgraded distributor before we upgrade the car to the head? And looking at that, we've got to say, yeah, we could. We lost a fraction load down, but we gained a bit through the rest of it. So yeah, it, it, is, it is feasible. And especially bear in mind that advanced curve isn't actually intended for this setup. We could have probably got that better if we'd have tried to. But short of taking the distributor bits, that wasn't an option, like I say. The idea was to just see if we could drop in the distributor and see. But what happens when we advance the timing three degrees and we went to 30 degrees? Well, basically we picked up almost another horsepower. And the loss at the bottom of the red range decreased slightly. So that's a win-win. And then finally, I stuck another two degrees in and notched it up to 32 degrees. And we gained a fraction more power. And again, at the bottom of the rev range, we regained a little bit more of the lost torque from standard. Could we gain any more at the bottom? Well, we probably could have done it if we'd advanced the time in further. But the gains higher up the rev range are by now so small that you don't want to go there. Because if two degrees is only getting you half a horsepower, then you, the, 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 the power is going up so slow in relation to additional advanced. You've really given the engine all it wants at higher revs. And if you push your advanced even further to try and pick up that very last bit at the bottom, all you're going to do, you're going to over-advance it. It's good. At best, it's going to pink. At worst, you're going to have a dead engine. So there needs to be a little bit of sense going on now. But I think it's actually a win-win. We've uh, proved what I set out to see. Could we put the performance distributor in an otherwise nearly standard engine so we can fit some weathers at a later date? And will it work okay? 
and not only did it work okay, it did actually give us some more power. So, on that bombshell, after you've liked, shared and subscribed, watch out for the next video where we get more interesting because when we do fit those Webers, I really test this distributor. Catch you on the flip side, guys.